And here is one also that came to me as a direct message on Twitter, and I won't give a name. And Father, a heavy question, is it possible to commit suicide and not go to hell? Well, we'll make this the topic of the week. That is indeed a tough topic for anybody to lose a family member, a friend, through suicide. Um, In fact, that happened to me way back in a rectory that I was living in. I lost a priest that was living with us um, to suicide. And I I was really upset and I felt something in my heart when he wasn't coming back from his day off. And I knew there was something wrong. And um, I trust that he's with the Lord. And we'll talk about that. Uh, We're going to go directly to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And they have a whole section, number two. 2280 through 2283 on suicide. 2280 begins, Everyone is responsible for his life before God who has given it to him. It is God who remains the sovereign master of life. So our lives are a gift from Almighty God. God has, (coughs) excuse me, God has given us a gift and that's the gift of our life, our human body, And the purpose of our life is to help us to get to heaven. And God remains the sovereign master of our life. We are obliged to accept life gratefully and preserve it for his honor and salvation of our souls. We are stewards, not our owners, not owners of the life God has entrusted to us. It is not ours to dispose of. So God has given us this gift. And really, it's not ours. We're responsible to God for the gift of our life, to use it for his glory and honor, to get ourselves to heaven, and not only to get ourselves to heaven, to help others achieve salvation. So let's go on. 2281, suicide contradicts the natural inclination of the human being to preserve and perpetuate his life. So All of us have the natural inclination to want to live. Whenever anything's going wrong, if there's a major disaster, people will go to extremes to to try to save their their own life. I remember that movie, and um, I think they just redid that movie where the plane crashed. I believe it were a bunch of Brazilian soccer players, and they crashed in, I believe, the Andy Mountains in a snowstorm. Little did they know they were close to civilization, but they couldn't get there. And as each person died, they decided to eat one another's flesh. And and, and they were good Catholics, and, and they did this to preserve their life, not to be cannibals, but they did this to preserve their life because we have this natural desire, inclination to help us live. It is gravely contrary to the just love of self. It likewise offends love of neighbor because it unjustly breaks the ties of solidarity with family, nation, and other human societies to which we continue to have obligations. Suicide is contrary to the love of the living God. So, suicide in itself is gravely evil. It's it's immoral. And just like any... um, any grave sin, any mortal sin, it's a grave evil. Now, we have to go on to this because um, to get to the heart of the matter of why a person can, can go to heaven, of course, and why they won't go to hell. 2282, if suicide is committed with the intention of setting an example, especially to the young, it also takes on the gravity of scandal. Voluntary cooperation in suicide is contrary to the moral law. So, okay, it has to be something that we freely choose, that we know is wrong, and that we have full consent of the will, just like any, um, just like committing any mor- mortal sin. But it goes on, 2282 says this, grave psychological disturbances, anguish, or grave fear of hardship, suffering, or torture, can diminish the responsibility of the one committing suicide. So there we have it. I would say that the majority of people who take their own lives are not of a right mind. There's something wrong. There's something amiss. There's something that they wouldn't do if they were in right mind or if they were in the right state, if they didn't have this grave fear or suffering or whatever is going in in their life. Some people, when they get to a certain point, they break and they they can't control themselves. So 
um, they're not fully responsible for their action. It's like someone that um, commits um, a, a sin of, say, stealing. If someone, if their family is starving, they have no money to buy food, and they get to a point they don't know what to do, they're desperate, they have no one who will help them, and they go to steal, well, that diminishes their responsibility. Now, in that, we still have the responsibility to try to do good. So um, we have to work on this. In fact, if there's someone listening to this show who is tempted to suicide, make sure you turn to someone for help. Don't try to carry your burden alone. We can't carry our burdens alone. We need one another. There are great hotlines to help people. Turn to your local parish priest, your pastor. Turn to uh, a friend. Go to a counselor but seek someone out who can help you get out of your depression or your sadness or your difficult situation. We have people there who will help. So please take that in, into consideration if you, if you are in the temptation to suicide. We should not despair of the eternal salvation of persons who have taken their own lives. By ways unknown to him alone, God can provide the opportunity for solitary repentance. The church prays for persons who have taken their own lives. See, we never can judge a soul. We never know what happens in someone's lives. We can never judge a soul who does some grave evil. Who knows what has gone wrong in their life? The most we can do is pray for them. Now, if someone does some, something horrendous in society, of course, society has a right to protect itself. If someone is a grave murderer or whatever, the church has a right to judge them and bring out the facts and then put them in jail. And the church even um, gives society the right to capital punishment, although the church is trying to talk society out of that to take all the means possible of protecting human life because human life is that gift given by God and no one can replace it. So, of course, a person who commits suicide, it doesn't mean they've gone to hell. We should pray for them. In fact, there's, there's a great lesson in this. It's, it's called the prayer, um, how, what would we call it? The prayer of um, anticipation. No, that wouldn't be the prayer of in anticipation. It would be the prayer that we say after an event. So if we, it's the same thing if we pray for those who have died, that our prayers today for that person who has committed suicide can be applied to them before they die. So if we pray for all of our ancestors, especially those we don't know, if we pray for a person that we know who has committed suicide, like that priest, I think of him often because he committed suicide just two weeks before I was ordained a priest, and it really placed a burden on my heart. But I remember him often, I pray for him, I carry him to the Mass, and I know that the Lord will apply those prayers to before he died. And maybe one of those prayers will give him at that last moment, that last breath before his life is gone or was gone, the gift of repentance, of turning to the Lord with a grateful heart for the gift of life. So don't lose hope if you love someone, especially uh, you know who you are and I know who you are. I don't want to give out your name in this podcast, but or anybody else who lost a loved one, don't despair. God is love and mercy and he looks down upon that person who is broken. You know when you have something that you treasure, one of your possessions, something that might be a family heirloom, maybe you have a woman or you have a special dish, or a man has something your father has given you. But we have heirlooms, maybe we have a special uh, gift from our family that's been passed on for generations, maybe a picture, and it fell off the shelf and shattered, and the glass ripped the picture in half. We're, that picture is broken. And, and we're broken because of it. It's the same thing when we lose someone we love. We lose a piece of us. But we don't want to discard that broken object. We do what we can to fix it. And so because we have the gift of life given us by God, God knows all. God doesn't discard us because we're broken. God, God doesn't discard us because we have wounds, God wants to heal us. So if you've lost someone you, you love, hold hope and trust in Almighty God, because He is divine mercy. <laughs>